These are the same sounds that would have been heard during the performance of 4 minutes and 33 seconds by John Cage, which was four and a half minutes of David Tudor sitting at the piano without playing anything. And Cage had written it for this particular performance and knew that it was going to be this wonderful outdoor space. Hello. Oh, I love your earring. Oh. Four minutes and 33 seconds is divided into three movements. First one, you heard the wind in the trees, much like we're hearing now. And during the second movement, it rained. And during the third movement, people started muttering and complaining. <laughs> and so Cage thought that, that that was the structure of the, of the music that, the, that got imposed by the three movements. The earliest we know that he actually talked about doing it was in 1948. He actually talked about making a silent disc and selling it to the Muzak Corporation. He was thinking about this in terms of a respite from Muzak, that if he could sell this to the Muzak company, they would have to play four and a half minutes of silence. Because like lots of musicians in the 1940s, he was very, very disturbed by the emergence of Muzak. In the late 1940s, early 1950s, he was getting interested in Zen. And in the Zen idea that all reality is kind of continuous and non-distinct in a way, that if you're listening to birds or the wind, that's the same as listening to the piano or somebody's voice, that there was no distinction to be made between the sounds that musicians made and the sounds that just happen in the environment that you couldn't control. Cage had also become good friends with Marcel Duchamp. In a way, was doing this, the same kind of thing Cage would later do in, in four minutes and 33 seconds, exhibiting something that we do not think of as art as a work of art. And so for Cage, this, there was a kind of continuity between that and, in a sense, framing sounds there was also a Robert Rauschenberg had just made a group of white paintings of totally white canvases that he just painted white. So for him, making four minutes and 33 seconds became the musical response to that. And he thought that music had to, to deal with that idea as well, that other, otherwise music would be lagging behind the visual arts. The Nanakoic chamber is a room that has been maximally soundproof so that no sound is going in or out of the room. Instead of silence, he heard two sounds, and a high one and a low one. This convinced Cage that sound was going on all the time, whether we were paying attention to it or not. The Hudson Valley painters came up here from New York and painted nature up here as a way of creating American painting. Landscapes up here did not look like they did in Europe. The trees were redder because of all the maple trees up here. And so by painting what they saw up here, the Hudson Valley painters created American art. And I've always thought in a sense that what Cage did was come to this same landscape and listen to the American landscape. It was kind of a new birth for American music, which had still been, despite some American innovations, it's still been very, very influenced by European and, and judged very much by European standards. And in 1952, it was time to wipe the slate clean, which Cage did by coming up here and listening to this quintessentially American landscape. 